Hey, you guys, happy Friday. I hope you guys are doing good. Yes, it is time for the official Lovely News Network podcast, okay? So this is the first episode. I hope you guys are doing good. So it's a lot of news to cover um, over the next few minutes here. It's a lot of stuff going on, honey. So let's go ahead and talk about Ball Gate Day 5. If you guys do not know, Nicki Minaj currently took to social media about 20 minutes ago, and she is going off. She's also doxing a reporter, honey. This is what went down. She took to her social media page to basically post screenshots of a reporter allegedly harassing her family for interviews. So the reporter says, hi, good day. My name is Shirlene Ramperstan, and I'm a reporter with The Guardian Media. I was hoping to speak to you for an article. Would that be possible? Was it your friend Nicki Minaj was speaking about in her tweet, Mr. Daniel? Hey, good evening. Would you consider speaking to me? I'm also hoping to have a conversation with your friend. Then they go back and they send another message. I know you're hesitant to speak to us, but just letting you know that CNN is in the country looking for you. And when they find you, they won't hesitate to reveal where you live and where your girlfriend lives and anything or anyone tied to you. If you speak to me, we won't reveal those details. So what do you say? So that is the message that Nicki Minaj's family member sent to Nicki. So Nicki took to her social media page in front of her 2 million followers, honey. And she says, threatening my family in Trinidad won't bode well for you. Then she says, Sherlene Rampastad, bitch, your days are fucking numbered, you dirty hoe. Then she says, in Trinidad harassing my family, I didn't want to give details, but now I will. And then she posts James Fieldling's um, name and phone number and his email from the UK Daily Mail. And then she goes on to post Charlene's phone number and says, bitch, pick up your phone, ho. Then she posts a picture of Charlene, pretty lady. And then Nicki Minaj says, they're forcing my family to have to hide out. This is what speaking up looks like. Millions of poor people treated this way by people you think are the good guys. This is unconscionable. So that is what Nicki Minaj said, honey. So she is going off. This is day five of this entire ball vaccine gate situation. Honey, I'm just here sipping tea. Now, I do think it's not a good look for her to dox the reporter because she knows how her fan base gets down. Her fan base is about to attack this woman, attack this woman's family. So Nicki definitely knows what she's doing by doxing this woman. But also, why is this reporter harassing the family and saying that, oh, if you speak to me, we won't give out your information. So this whole situation has gotten really, you know, just crazy. But Nicki Minaj has to take some blame because she put the story out there. Like I said, has she just came out and been honest and said, you know what? There's not enough information. I'm not down with this whole vaccine mandate. I'm cool. I'd rather just wait it out. Then nobody probably would have cared as much. But when she came out with, you know, her cousins, best friends, homeboys, balls, that's when, you know, the media jumped on it. Because, again, now you're saying that somebody had symptoms from their coveted, you know, godlike potion and they can't have you saying that. So it's going to be interesting to see what comes of this. It's going to be very interesting to see if that reporter or the Daily Online Mail ends up saying something to Nicki Minaj about her basically doxing and blasting them. So now in other news, I want to go ahead and move on to this crazy trend that's going on all over TikTok. Now, when I first heard of this, I heard about this trend like three days ago from my son, my youngest son. And he was like, mom, have you have you heard of the Devious Licks Challenge? And I'm like, no, what is that? And he's like, people are going around school, breaking stuff, destroying property, messing up the bathrooms, and they're filming themselves and posting on TikTok. And my first response is, why the hell would they do that? That's vandalism. Like, that's not cool. And I was like, you better not be involved in that. He was like, no, of course not. But he was telling me about it. And I was just like, okay, that's not cool. And so he said people were posting pictures on social media and stuff. So I didn't think too much about it. But then some kids at his school took it even further where they fucked up the bathrooms. Like, messed up the bathroom, broke the toilet handles, clogged the toilets. Uh, They took the whole soap dispenser, the napkin dispenser, just messed up the bathroom. So they made an announcement that the kids cannot use the bathroom. Like, it's been so destroyed, they can't even use the bathroom if they wanted to. And they also said that they're going to look for the perpetrators. And if any of these kids get caught, they will be charged with felonies. 
Minnesota ain't playing that bullshit, bitch, because what you guys are doing, it's not funny. It's not a TikTok trend. What you guys are doing is theft and damage to school property, which is vandalism. I don't understand why these stupid ass trends start and people don't think that they're trying to set you up for the okie doke. OK, we can't get you for selling drugs. We can't get you out here doing dirt. So let's make a really fun challenge. OK. Uh, destroying school property and act like it's a game when this is really a felony. You are destroying property that is against the law. So these kids are looking at getting hit with felonies for this because the damage is very, very great. Right now we're dealing with a supply chain so they can't just go and get new toilet paper holders and soap dispensers. A lot of stuff isn't even available right now. So this is not a good look with these kids damaging property and it's going on all over the nation, not just here in Minnesota. So let me go ahead and play you guys some clips. Go ahead and check this out. Social media challenge that's going viral. It's called the Devious Licks Challenge, and we've learned that some area students, they're now facing serious consequences for participating. News Hive anchor Rob Powers in the newsroom for us this afternoon to explain. Hi, Rob. Well, Mike, we found out about this new viral challenge when the Rocky River Police Department posted a warning on its Facebook page. It says it never heard of this challenge before last Friday, but since then it's been inundated with damage from this trend. So here's the challenge. Kids steal things from their schools, then post videos on TikTok, either showing the actual theft or showing them destroy those stolen items at home. So far, kids in Rocky River have stolen soap dispensers and paper towel holders from restrooms, clogged toilets, and broken the handles off urinals. Middle schoolers are really bad at keeping secrets. <clears throat> and we have cameras in the building, so when we saw the damage, I went back and, and started um, piecing together who was in the bathroom at the time. And, um, tracking down what time the damage occurred. Uh, and then we had a core uh, group of people we were looking at. And you know, that officer says the challenge is unfolding in schools all across Northeast Ohio, not just Rocky River, but in that city, police say the challenge has resulted in three suspensions and possible criminal charges as well. They're asking parents to talk with their kids, make sure they understand that actions do have consequences. Students are destroying bathrooms at schools and recording the destruction. KCAL 9's Rachel Kim shows us the damage and looks at what's being done now to stop it. <laughs> it's the latest viral TikTok trend that has students destroying and stealing school property for likes and follows. The destructive stunt known as the bathroom challenge involves students recording themselves, trashing and taking items, then posting the videos with the caption, Devious Lick. These are videos from schools across the country, but it's also happening in schools here in the Southland, including Hart High School in Santa Clarita. They've been taking soap dispensers, and now most of the bathrooms are closed. They just took the door, and then some people, like, they took a fire extinguisher and they sprayed the walls. It's kind of stupid. It, no, it's really stupid. The principal here at Hart High School sent an email to parents asking them to speak with their students about how dangerous and costly the vandalism and thefts are. He said they've already suspended multiple students because of it. It's just disappointing that it's like a trend. Shirley Robes has three children at Hart High and she read the principal's email. I'm just glad that they're responding to it and they're just letting us know about it right away. School district officials everywhere are now asking parents to get involved. At Foothill High School in Santa Ana, administrators are warning and asking parents to discourage this type of behavior and are even asking them to return any items their students may have stolen. Because of the ongoing problems, the video sharing platform has removed the devious lick videos. In a statement, TikTok says, we expect our community to stay safe and create responsibly, and we do not allow content that promotes or enables criminal activities. We are removing this content and redirecting hashtags and search results to our community guidelines to discourage such behavior. The people at our school work so hard and um, just honestly this really costs a lot of money especially for the students who like stole it. They have to pay all that back. I bet their parents are like really mad. Reporting right, so you guys just heard those two clips. One was from Outrageous Ohio and the other was from Crazy Ass California. So again kids Stop doing this challenge. All challenges are not good. Just like the milk crate challenge that went viral a few weeks ago. So much so that you had people breaking their arms, breaking their legs. One lady, they thought she died, but then she ended up, you know, being okay. Like some of these challenges are not funny and they're not okay. You have to use common sense, you know, and don't do challenges that can land you in damn jail or that can land you with the juvenile record just to get likes and follows. So I hope parents understand what's going on and talk to their children. 
a lot of schools are sending out letters. I know a few parents in the Discord have posted letters that their school sent out, but this is happening nationwide. So I suggest you talk to your kids before they get caught up in the peer pressure and they end up doing this stupid shit. These kids, honey, they be on some monkey see, monkey do type shit, and it doesn't make any sense. It's like, come on, how old are we? Why are you sitting here destroying property? At some point in time, you're going to have to use the bathroom. And y'all done fucked up all the toilets. Y'all done messed up all the napkins. Y'all done took the soap dispensers and we're in the middle of COVID. Like, come on now, where is the common sense? People need to be able to wash their hands to prevent the spread of diseases. And y'all are ruining soap dispensers. Child, I can't with this generation. It's just insane. Where is the pride? Like when we were in school, we had pride for our school. You couldn't come to our school and just, you know what I'm saying, mess up shit and wreck shop. Because not only are the teachers going to check you, the students are going to check you. Bitch, I have to use this bathroom. You make sure you flush when you get done. You clean up behind yourself. So I just, I don't understand this whole, how this is even funny, how this is even cute. But child, maybe I'm just too old for this TikTok challenge BS. Moving on to the next story. So if you guys do not know, I posted in the Discord, and this is insane. This morning, Haitians were trending on Twitter, just randomly Haitians. So I clicked on I'm like, well, what, what's going on in Haiti? Now, I, I had assumed, honey, there was another earthquake, but it was not an earthquake. Literally 10,000 Haitians showed up at our doorstep last night. They, like, crossed the Rio Grande River. So people were on Twitter going back and forth and arguing and saying, you know, where do they come from? How do they get here from the Caribbeans to be in Texas? They are little, there's literally 10,000 Haitian people right now. And there might be some other races mixed up in there, but you mainly see Haitians, honey. And they're all under this bridge in Texas. So right now it is insane. The migrant issue down in Texas. Let me go ahead and play y'all this news clip, honey. Check this out. What you're looking at is sources are telling me upwards of 10 thousand migrants waiting underneath that bridge right now after they crossed illegally into the United States. Why are they waiting there? Well, what I'm being told is Border Patrol holding facilities in the area are completely over capacity and Border Patrol agents are completely overwhelmed. There's just nowhere for these people to go right now. They're free to go. They're not being detained right now. They're just kind of holding themselves under this bridge, waiting to be apprehended by Border Patrol. As you mentioned, Border Patrol sources are telling me most of these migrants are coming in from Haiti. There are also some from Cuba and Venezuela as well. But this is just a horrible situation down there, and our border agents need a lot of help. Consider yesterday morning, there were only 4,000 migrants under that bridge. Now I'm told it's well over 10,000. So in a span of just over 20, four hours those numbers have doubled and it's not getting any better those migrants keep streaming across they just walk across the Rio Grande on a dam they walk a dirt path and more and more are showing up to that bridge by the hour it's getting worse by the day literally by the hour we want to point out something we've been using our drone to show everybody these remarkable pictures you can see the video we got on the ground from some sources who are leaking stuff to us as well um, we just learned that the FAA has put out a temporary flight restriction, a TFR, in the area immediately around the port of entry where that bridge is. What does that mean? It means our drone can no longer fly and show those images. It's a two-week TFR, and according to the FAA, it's for special security reasons. We've reached out to the FAA to get a little clarification on what the heck that means. The timing on this, the location a little bit curious, I just want to point out, Fox News has been at the border for the better part of seven months now. We've been using the drone the entire time. It's never been an issue. All of a sudden, the last 24 hours, we start showing these images at this bridge and a TFR goes up. We can no longer fly. When we get an update from the FAA, we'll be sure to let you know. But unfortunately for those agents on the ground, they're completely overwhelmed. They need some serious help right now, and hopefully they get it from the federal government. All right, see, so I just heard that news clip. Like I said, this whole situation is really, really disturbing. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.